There's a, a priest buddy of mine who's uh, a, a pastor down in Louisiana, and uh, you know he's got a real good Cajun way about him. And uh, I've heard him use this line before when he's preaching, especially with very hard, challenging gospels. He'll tell his people, "If you can't say Amen, say Ouch." And I'm like, "Oh, that's a good line. That's good. That's how I felt with this gospel today. I think this gospel is perhaps <clears throat> one of the hardest things that Jesus says in the gospels." Uh, I think it's one of the most challenging things that he places before us, before his disciples. Not just simply this command to be perfect as the Father is perfect, but this command to love our enemies. Not just simply tolerate our enemies, but to love our enemies and to pray for those who persecute us. Because, man, like, though we love to, though we find pleasure and comfort and identity and in doing this, we as Christians, as Jesus' followers, do not get to categorize um, and other um, people who we deem as enemies, right? We don't get to label any person or group or people in such a way so as to dismiss them. We don't have that luxury. We don't have that option placed before us. Jesus hasn't given us that option to say, okay, these are the lines. This is where you can say these people are in, those people are out. No, he challenges us not to merely tolerate enemies, but to love them. That's a powerful, powerful thing. And again, if you can't say amen, say ouch, like it hurt, that hurts. That's hard. He challenges us not to merely love those who love us, not to love those who think like us, pray like us, worship like us, vote like us. He challenges us to love those who don't think like us, who don't worship like us, who don't pray like us, who don't vote like us, right? He challenges us to love our enemies. Okay, so what does that mean? Does that mean then that we just simply accept and condone everything that everybody else does? No. Like, absolutely not. Absolutely not. We don't simply condone and celebrate things that are evil. We don't. We're we're obliged to abhor evil. Um, Are people in our day and age thinking and doing and supporting and proposing and endorsing ideas that are terrible and evil and just so inimical to human flourishing and freedom. Absolutely. Right? There are people who have terrible ideas for the human family. And are we supposed to just simply, just to, to love them, does that mean like, oh, we just accept you as you are with your bad ideas? No. No, it doesn't mean that. I know, I know you know that, but it just bears repeating, right? We cannot dismiss them. We cannot hate them. We can hate their ideas. Right? It was St. Paul who says in his letter to the Ephesians that our, our enemy, our battle, is not with flesh and blood, not with any particular person, but it's with principalities and powers. It's a spiritual battle. The enemy is the enemy. And the enemy, yes, has whispered serious lies and deceit and evil into the minds and hearts of many people. But that person is not my enemy. As Thomas Aquinas says, to love is to will the good of the other as other. Which means that like, to love someone who is wrapped up in terrible ideas means I have to tell them the truth. Again, this is where we have to be careful that sometimes I think as Catholics we can wield the truth like a battle axe. It was Pope Benedict who said that it's caritas in veritate, charity in truth, truth and charity. They have to go together. When, when love is divorced from the truth, it ceases to be love. It just becomes mere sentimentality. And when truth loses love, it just becomes something combative. It has to be, the both have to come together. So we don't have the luxury as Christians of labeling so as to dismiss anybody. There's nobody that we can point to that Jesus says, okay, fine, yeah, I hate them too. Like, there's, there's nobody. Every person, the most heinous sinner, the most wicked politician, the person advocating the greatest, gravest evil, that person too is a person that Jesus, the Good Shepherd, is running after. He's running after them like he's running after me. And I think we, because of our fallen nature, we tend to think in tribal categories, enemy categories, rival categories. Who's with me? Who's against me? Who's in? Who's out? But this is not how God thinks. I was reminded of that scene in uh, the beginning of the book of Joshua, where Joshua's leading the the armies of Israel into, uh, into battle. And it says this, this is Joshua chapter 5, verse 13, starting here. He says, when Joshua was by Jericho, he lifted up his eyes and looked and behold, 
And beheld a man stood before him with his drawn sword in his hand. And Joshua went up to him, went up to him and said, are you, with, are you for us or for our adversaries? So Joshua beholds this angelic warrior. Are you on our side or are you on their side? This is good to know, right? Are you on our side or on, on their side? And he said, no. <laughs> but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. In other words, like, like heaven's not on, like that's just not how heaven thinks. Heaven thinks, I'm after all of you. I'm after all of you. Yes, there's ideas that some of you hold that are inimical to the gospel, inimical to human freedom and flourishing, and I don't tolerate those ideas, but I love all of you. This is what Jesus is placing before us. Intensely challenging words to love our enemies. And he says, pray for those who persecute you. So this whole love of enemy business, it's got to start in prayer. I think that's the first place. If there are people that you just can't even stomach, you see their faces pop up on the evening news, you hear them talking, right? You, all these things, it just makes your blood boil. Okay, if I'm going to be a disciple, if I'm going to be obedient to the word, that means I have to begin to pray for those people. And maybe it's, Lord, like, give me the grace to desire, to desire, to desire to pray for them. Let's start there. We have to be obedient to the word. We have to love our enemies because Jesus did. Amen.